goes along, along the far frontier. The last we hail, who rides the border trail, along the far frontier. When the history of the West is written, to the world it will be clear. There's glory in the story of the border patrol, along the far frontier. Taking them. They buy them here in Mexico and take them across the border. Those fellas are sure in a hurry to get somewhere. Somebody must want that load of oil awful bad. Round them up, fellas, and get them back into the road. You better watch yourself. That patrol shack's just around the bend. Everything's in order. Okay, where are you headed, Chopperville? Yeah, that's right. You said you were heading for Sharperville. You heard me right. That's what I said. Well, for your information, you're heading for Alamo. Maybe I've changed my mind. Maybe I have, too. I want to inspect your cargo again. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. You checked us through once. What do you think you are? out of here before somebody sees it. Move that horse. Understand it. Me either. We've got to get those cattle to water. 
I'll leave her clearance papers here and write Tom a note. Here. Okay, Johnny. Bring them on. You know, Roy, Tom's old man had better not hear about us bringing these cattle through without Tom checking them. You know what a stickler the old guy is for discipline. You're right. And if he does hear about it, Tom will be getting one of those lectures he used to give us when we were kids. nosy border patrol cop to give us quite a chase. What'd you do with him? Well, he wasn't dead, so we dumped him off the side of the road. Oh, um, we lost one of the drums. Lost it? That's bad. Well, they're back in the USA. Hey, you the boss? Yeah, that's me. Missing. Where is he? Boys tell me the drum he was in fell off the truck. Listen, you. You promised to get us all through safe. Stop squawking. You knew this was going to be a rough deal when you get into it. Listen, cowboy. Take it easy. We'll go back and pick him up. Where are we now? A couple of miles inside the border. You sure nobody knows how we got back into the country? Just us. The driver tells me he had a little tough luck. Border Patrol officer got on his tail and he had to slug him. So what? So it makes it more risky for us. It also makes it more expensive for you, about $5,000 worth. Today's payday. Listen, you, this smells like a shakedown to me. And when our friends hear about it... You better ante up, pal. You're a long ways from a railroad station. If you tried to walk, you'd be picked up in less than an hour. Okay. Five grand, you say, huh? That's right. Come on, let's have a little conference. Okay, you got us cold. We're ready to pay off. That's better. Everybody back on the truck. Give me a hand, boys. See if those lips are all tight. We won't clip over a few hundred. Thanks. Why, you? Get in your barrel. Okay, okay. Rocco. That missing passenger is going to change our plans a little, so I'll take over from here on in. You go with me. You're asking for more trouble than you can handle. Wait till our friends hear about this. You're scaring me to death. Hey, Bart, what about that threat of making things tough for us? <laughs> they got a surprise coming. Nice bumpy ride they hadn't figured on. Hey, if this is the end of the line, let me out before I smother. Don't worry, you won't smother. Full of oil. You ought to get a medal for this. Those guys are all wanted by the law. Yeah, we saved those government guys a lot of trouble. 
Here's your half of that extra five grand. No use turning it into the boss. He wouldn't understand. Okay, brought your bird back. Well, this may seem a lot of trouble to you, boss, but in our particular form of endeavor, why, we can't be too careful. Telephone communications can always be tested. Carry a pigeon? Well, that's different. I assume you took care of our client? Slick as silk. They had a little run-in with the Border Patrol officer before I took care of our friends. Well, that's bad. Didn't kill him, did they? No, of course not. Uh, but I'll bet he don't feel so good right now. Know who it was? Tom Sharper. Not young Tom Sharper. Yeah. Sorry it wasn't his father. Boy said he got in the back end of the truck and started fooling around with the drums. If that's the case, we're out of business for a while. The Border Patrol will check in every oil drum in the country. Right, we'd better take it easy. That's all we can do. Come on, you've got to get out of here. They say that a cowboy lives lazy and long, just hanging around campfires and singing a song. Now you can believe me, that don't mean a thing. When I'm through at night, I'm just too tired to sing. What cowboy's living is far from the best. Wrong, for I still love the West. They gave me a piddle and said, learn to ride. I jumped on that pony and oh, how I cried. It started to gallop and jumping around. It's now been eight years and I still can't sit down. <laughs> a cowboy's living is far from the best. Don't get me wrong, for I still love the West. On Saturday night, I dress up like a dude, and I go out of court, and I'm just in the mood. When we get to town, I meet up with my pal. He borrows my money, walks off with my gal. A cowboy's living is far from the best. But don't get me wrong, for I still love the West. Maybe it would if you'd stick your head in the machine. Hey, hey which one of you young sprouts is uh, Roy Rogers? Huh? Guilty, sir. Uh, well, we let the judge decide that. Here, I touched you. That's for you. That's a subpoena. Subpoena? Yeah. What's the matter? I don't know nothing about that. But Judge Bullfincher told me to fetch you in alive. So come on, get in here, because I don't want to be late for my bit, okay? <laughs> if you don't mind, I think I'll ride Trigger. What say? I say, I think I'll ride my horse Trigger. Well, just as you like. Don't you stop to do any wool gathering on the way, son. Cross my heart. All right, that's good enough for me. Say, Pat. Huh? Did you fight in the Civil War? Was I in the Civil War? No, I wasn't, but this car was. <laughs> hey. Well, get up. No, I kicked the wrong horse. Where you I wonder what Cookie's up to sending me a subpoena like this. I don't know, but you better go to town and find out. Guess you're right. As soon as you're through bailing, you and the boys come on in. All right.
Just how fresh can you be? Miss? Gee, I'm sorry, Miss. I, I suppose you got that mud on your gloves from making mud pies. Well, honest, it wasn't me. It was... If I ever get the chance to, I'll... Well, I'll... Take it easy. Here. Oh, you, you... And that goes for your horse, too. Wait a minute, miss. Your paper. Son, that just shows you what circumstantial evidence will do. Well, she certainly convicted me in a hurry. Hi, Mr. Newcomb. Glad to see you, Roy. Too bad about Tom. Is that why you're here? You wouldn't be surprised. This is going to be pretty tough on Tom's dad. I hear he hasn't been feeling well lately. Well, he's out now. You can find out for yourself. Roy, I'm sure glad to see you. Glad to see you, too, Al. Sorry to hear about Tom. That's a terrible shock, Roy. Can't even find a trace of him. When you crossed the border in the morning after those cattle, did he say anything to you that might give us a clue? No, not that I remember. Uh, try and recollect. It's important. You were the last one across before he was reported missing. Well, there was a truckload of oil drums that crossed the border just ahead of us. Didn't they report it? No. And you know I can't help but think there was something crooked. No son of mine would desert his post. Pretty evident that he did, Alf. He left the station and shirked his duty and just skedaddled. Newcomb, 32 years ago when I was United States Marshal, I ran you in. If you say that about my boy, I'll do it again. How can you? What I said about Tom was the truth and you know it. Don't say that again. My boy is innocent. Tell him, Roy. You can't tell me because you don't know. Your boy deliberately deserted his post. Now. Take it easy, Alf. I can handle it. Break it up, Newcomb. Why don't you mind your own business? going to regret this, Alf Sharper. I'll get even with you if it takes the rest of my life. Come on. <laughs> Don't you think you're a little old for this kind of stuff? Confidentially, yes. But don't tell Newcomb. <laughs> Are you stopping at Judge Bullfinch's? That's right. Well, I'll be down to see you as soon as things quiet up a bit. Good. Get up. Found time yet? I don't think so. Good. Get your men and find them before they do. Boss, I don't think that's a Get them and find them, I said. I'm going to make Alf Sharper regret he ever had a son. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? Yeah, I do. Jeb, you catch that fine mess of fish there? Yep. Big hole down by the falls? Yep. What'd you use? 
I ain't going to tell you. You've been trying to find that out for years, Cookie. I ain't going to tell you. Jeb, you're under oath here. Now, are you going to tell me what you are using, or is Jim going to take you down to jail? Well, I don't want to go to jail. Well, then tell me. Well, I'll tell you. Big, fat worms, Dad. Blame it, I've been using them fancy flies and... Uh, in season, of course. Big, fat worm. <clears throat> well, in view of the fact and all the evidence here... Court finds you guilty of catching fish out of season and finds you five dollars. But gosh, Cookie, I, I only got a dollar. All right, Jeb, it'll just be a dollar then. Is that all? That's all. Right. Case dismissed. <clears throat> Except I'll take charge of the evidence here. So long, Cookie. So long, Jim. So long, Jim. Your, Honor. So long, Jim. your next case is here, Judge. Why well, I haven't any next... I wish you luck. He's in a bad mood today. Come on, Jim. Uh-oh. Judge, before you try this case, I want to talk to you. Yes? He did? Well, I never heard of such a thing. Stand back and I'll let him have it. The court finds you guilty of mayhem, assault and battery, and insurrection, and sentences you to 10 years, maybe 11. But, Judge, wait a minute. You're mad at him, aren't you? Well, yes, I'm mad at him, but not that mad. There wasn't that much mud. Well, you've had a change of heart. Well, as long as you don't want to send him to jail, you might as well meet him. Susan Hathaway, this is Roy Rogers. Oh, Roy Rogers? Tom's friend? That's right. I'm really awfully sorry this happened. <laughs> so is Trigger. He told me to apologize for him. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, Roy, you want to stay and have a uh, little evidence for dinner with us? They look mighty good, Cookie. <laughs> Fry them, Chris, will you soon? All right, Judge. <laughs> Headline in that paper is the reason I sent you the subpoena, Roy. I wanted to have a talk with you. If Tom is in a jam, why, I'll probably have to sentence him. Sit down, will you? Thanks, Cookie. What kind of a jam? Well, you know about him turning up missing and everything. Well, the only thing they found was that note that you left for him at the patrol shack. Well, I guess Tom didn't come back. The note was still there. Well, well, Al's taken it pretty hard. You know, he practically owns the whole town and how proud he was of Tom. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just recently reminded of that. What happened at the border, Roy? Well, all I know, Cook, is we saw Tom when we crossed the border early in the morning. Uh -huh. He said he'd have something to eat for us when we came back with the cattle. But when we got back, he was gone. So we left our clearance papers and a note for him. Beats me. Have they organized the search yet? Well, they're working on that now, and I'm sure glad you're here in time for it. Men, I think the best thing to do on a manhunt like this is to fan out. We'll go as far as we can before noon, then search the way back. That way it forms a dragnet and nothing can get by us. We're ready to split up now. You all know your territory. If you find Tom or anything that might lead to him, get word in as fast as you can. I know how you feel, Alf, but this is going to mean a lot of tough riding. You're not as young as you used to be. Roy, my boy means more to me than anything else in the world. Wild horses couldn't keep me away today. <laughs> I knew you'd feel that way. You stick with us. We gotta keep going. They've probably got a posse out looking for young Sharper. I've got to take young Sharper into town. What's the matter with him? Oh, I don't know. I found him on my ranch this morning with a bad bruise on his head. The poor fellow don't seem to know who he is or what he's doing. How do you feel, son? I don't know. I don't think it's from a fall. Looks to me like he's been slugged. Get down off that wagon and start walking. What are you talking about? This is my wagon, and I'm taking the boy to town. Can't you see he's hurt? You heard me. Get off. Are you 
fellows are sure asking for trouble. That's our problem. Just keep calm and get on back to your ranch. You bet I will. Sonny boy, we'll take good care of you. That's what it is. Hey, Al! Look! by the name of Anderson, shot in the back. That's his team. Either of you recognize this? I certainly do. That's the gun I used when I was a United States Marshal. I gave it to Tom and he joined the Border Patrol. It's been fired recently. Found it right in here. Do you suppose Tom had anything to do with of that? Of course he didn't. I would Tom want to shoot Anderson. Well, take it easy, Alf. We know Tom wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, I guess we'd better go pick up the body. Tom. It's the shot, Cookie. Yeah, let's get him home. Glad to see you got the place guarded. Where is he? You know, there's something sure wrong with that guy. He don't know where he is and don't seem to care. Says he thinks he hurt his head by falling off his horse. Oh, he does, eh? Sounds interesting. Good evening, gentlemen. he knows his name. It's Tom. Tom? And he shot a man dead this morning. I shot a man? You shot a man, and the law is after you. But if you stick with us and do as we say, we'll see that the law doesn't get you. I don't remember killing anyone. Found your gun. The whole countryside is looking for you. Well, then I'm going to turn myself in. But you don't have to. If I could only remember... Just be good and do as we say. You're right about Tom. He's 
the victim of amnesia, loss of memory, induced by traumatic shock. Are you sure you don't remember anything? How do you know he's not playing possum? If he didn't have amnesia, he would have been back at headquarters by yesterday. Now we'll get even with old Alf Sharper and take this town over. In 30 days, it'll be Newcombville, and we can cross the border like it was the state highway. We'll make old Alf Sharper the laughing stock of this country. It's a good idea. But how? And what are we going to do with Tom? Keep him here. I'll get a message through to you later. Hi, Roy. Okay. What's new? We found his horse out at Anderson's place, but not a trace of Tom. It doesn't look too good for him, Cookie. We're not getting anywhere fast, are we? How's Alf? Well, his doctor's in there with him now. Brought him over here so that Sue could take care of him. Hello, Roy. How is he, Doctor? I wish I could say he's all right, but I can't. Is there anything we can do? Well, Sue has all the instructions, and I left the medicine in there with him. If anything happens, get in touch with me immediately. He's had a terrible shock for a man his age. and needs plenty of peace and quiet. If anything else happens, the shock might prove fatal. Newcomb can really think up some beauties. Saddle up the horses. We're gonna play a little game in town this afternoon. And Sharper's gonna be it. Wake up. Come on. On your feet. How would you like to go for a little horseback ride? I don't know. Come on, we want you to go with us. We're going to town borrow some money from the bank. Newcomb wanted us here at 2 o'clock sharp. I wonder what he's got to tell us. There's only one way to find out, Cookie. Ask him. Hey, hey, snap out of it. We're going in the bank for a minute. You wait outside. We won't be long. When we come out, we'll split up. We'll all meet at the rim rock, got it? Right. Well, you're right on time. Look.
right, you get to your feet. Tom. Tom. I don't know. Oh. Tom, what are you doing in a stick up? Have you lost your mind? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, we better go see the sheriff. I can't understand what's the matter with that boy. He seems perfect physically except for that bruise on his head, but he still won't talk. Well, maybe we'd better get out down here. That might do some good. Oh, please, Cookie, not yet. If Alf hears about that bank robbery, the shock would kill him. Remember what the doctor said. Sue's right. We can't let Alf know about this. You say he still doesn't remember anything? That's what he says. Every time I ask him something, he just says he can't remember. It could be amnesia. Sheriff, do you mind if I try a little experiment? Not at all, Roy. Anything that might help Tom. Fellas, you know how proud Tom was of being a border patrolman. Come on, I'll need your help. Let's sing a song for all the boys along, along the far frontier. The lads we hail who ride the border trail along the far frontier. From the blue bonnet prairies of Texas to the mountains, California way, those hard riding sons of the saddle do their duty night or day. Their fame has grown in every place they're known. Along the far frontier, they stand for right and for their cause they'll fight if trouble should appear. When the history of the West is written, to the world it will be clear. There's glory in the story of the Border Patrol. Think you're lying. Hey! Hey, Roy! Stop that fighting, you go. I'll lock your both up. Tim, break it up, Roy. Are you crazy? Fighting a man in a place like this. Stop that fighting or I'll let you have it. Oh. think you're lying.
Rogers, if I could get in there, I'd bust every bone in your hard head. Just give me these keys. I'll keep you a thing. Okay, Cookie, go ahead. Oh, Roy, you know I couldn't lay a hand on you. But why did you hit Tom? Well, I feel as bad about it as you do. But his amnesia was caused by a blow on the head. And I thought maybe a shock like this would bring him back to us. Get me some water, quick. All right, Roy. But only a small glass this time. All right, Roy. Tom. Cookie. Hello, Tom. Roy, it worked. What happened? What are we doing in here? Hey, Tom, have a drink. You were hit on the head three days ago, and you've had amnesia. Let me rest for a while, Roy. You can rest in a minute. This is mighty important, Tom. What do you remember last? Why, well, I, I stopped a truck loaded with drums of soybean oil. Remember that one of the drums sounded hollow. And then... They must have been smuggling something in them drums. Tom, Tom, do you remember who was driving the truck? Never saw him before, Cookie. Do you remember anything particular about the truck? Yes, there was, Roy. They tried to pull a fast one on me. And when I chased them, one of the drums fell off the truck and rolled off the road. I'm sure they were smuggling something. Do you remember where it went off? Sure. Near the dry lake above Willow Springs. Good. We'll go out and have a look. Where are the boys? They're out front. They said they'd wait for you. Can't I help, Roy? You just stay here and take it easy. We don't want anybody to know what's happening. Anything happen? We're going for a ride. What for? Look for an oil can. What an awful way to die. Well, you can say that again. Take a look at this. Oh, Roy, this man's a criminal. He's wanted by the law. He was being smuggled back into the country. There must have been criminals in those other oil drums. That's why they were trying to get away from Tom. Yeah. You know, Cookie, a lot of people during the war sneaked out of this country because they couldn't stand investigation. Mexican authorities are cooperating in every way they can with our border patrol to arrest them when they try to get back in. But, Roy, who's behind this smuggling? Well, I don't know, but I guess we better have the sheriff pick this up and go we'll have a talk with Alf. glad you're home. Hey, Alf, what are you doing out of bed? Well, Newcomb was just here. I couldn't stop him. He went right in and woke Alf up. Why, well, that dirty hyena, I'll have him arrested for illegal entry. Never mind, Roy. I'm all right. Newcomb told me the truth, and it's just as well. We've been fighting for 30 years. Today, we shook hands and made up. He told me all about Tom and offered me a good price for my holdings. What? You sell out to Newcomb? I have no choice. After what happened, I couldn't look my friends in the face. It was thoughtful of Newcomb to make me the offer. Sounds more than thoughtful to me. Where would he get that much money? Looks like a well-worked-out plan. You can bet a cow to a donut you're right, too, Roy. Why would Newcomb want us in town just in time for that bank robbery? 
They weren't looking for money. Why, they knew that... Hey, they knew that Tom was suffering from amnesia, and that's why they wanted to frame him. Alf, Newcomb still hates you. He wants to run you out of town and buy you out cheap. Can't you see how the pieces fit together? All we have to do is hang them on Newcomb. I should have known better than to trust that man. Judge Bullfincher, I want a warrant for now, that take man. Take it easy, Alf. We can get a lot more flies with honey than we can vinegar. If you'll all help me, I think we can round up the whole bunch and clear Tom. Sure, sure, Roy. What can we do? I'm not quite sure yet. But if I looked around, I might be able to find out. Alf, tonight we're going to invite Newcomb over here for the best dinner he ever had. What? Afterwards, to kind of quiet his nerves and keep him here for a while. Maybe even a little song. You're thinking I'm kind of blue Making my mind up just what to do Guess I'll be moving and on my way Hitting the trail back to Monterey Been missing the scenery, it's nice to see Missing the folks there, one specially. Her name is Rosita, and so I say, getting the trail back to Monterey. I'll be brushing up on my Spanish, saying, see, you'll take it Las estrellas en el cielo Me quieran a tu lado So see you around, boys, don't work too hard When I get time to, I'll send a card Guess I'll be moving and on my way Hitting the trail back to Monterey Hitting the trail back to Monterey. Nothing like music to make a good dinner set, well. Thanks a lot. If you don't mind coming inside, I'd like to talk a few things over with you. Well, can't it wait till morning? I really ought to get going. It'll only take a minute. Business. Oh. Well, in that case, I guess I'd better. Will you excuse us? I'll go with you and get some more coffee. Oh, that's fine, Sue. Just keep a little background music going, boys. We'll be back as soon as we can. Come on, Cookie. I've got a list of my assets here, and they're considerably more than I realized. Well, I always thought you owned most of the town. Anyway, that figure I gave you is out. I'll have to have at least 15,000 more cash. Oh. 15,000. That's a lot of money, Alf. That's the way it worked out. Can I see your figures? Mm, certainly. Here we are. Roy, here's a skeleton key. And you don't have to worry if we get caught, it's legal, because I got a search warrant. <laughs> What's that? Sounds like pigeons. Oh, they do. God, the whole flock of them. Yeah, and they're carrier pigeons, too. Well, I wonder what he wanted them for. Well, it could be to send messages to whoever's working for him. They couldn't take a chance on the telephone. We better take this one along as a souvenir. 
I want to look around some more. Flying mailman, huh? Any news today? <laughs> oh. There's no doubt that your price is reasonable, but I hadn't figured on that extra 15000 Suppose I see what I can do and call you tomorrow. Certainly. You know where to find me. Uh, Sue, how about some coffee? All right, Al. Here it is. Nice and hot. Here you are, Mr. Newcomb. Oh, uh, no, thank you. Oh, uh, just one with me. Oh, no, I really got to be getting along. Oh, please, Mr. Newcomb, we get to see you so seldom. No coffee, but... please, but thank you just the same. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Keith. So long. Why, well, where's Roy? I wanted to say good night to him. Why, uh, he was around here just a minute ago. Have you seen him, Sue? Well, no. He might have gone back into the kitchen for another piece of cake or something. And Judge Bullfinch here. Right over here, Mr. Newcomb. Good night. Thanks again, Sue. The dinner was delicious. Good night. Good night. night. Good night. Me too. Good night. That was a close one. How'd it go? Wonderful. Fine, fine. Elf, did he swallow the bait about the 15,000? He sure did. Uh, did you find anything? Yeah, show him, Cookie. <laughs> What good is that going to do us? That pigeon belongs to Newcomb. He has plenty more of them. If my guess is right, he'll be sending a message by one of them in the morning. And it'll be heading towards the border. We've got to get that message and read it. We'll use this pigeon to carry the message on to where it was intended to go. That way we can catch him red-handed. But why will that pigeon go you to... You can bet he's got all those pigeons trained to go to the same place. How are we going to catch a pigeon? Come on, I'll tell you. your imagination run away with you. Well, the sun's been up a half an hour. If Newcomb's going to send a message, it ought to be pretty soon. Roy, look. It's too far away, Cookie. It's heading down towards Foy. around his leg. Oh, boy, the pigeon, you didn't have to. No, he's a lucky shot. I just nicked his wing. He'll be all right. <laughs> Here, let me take him. Look at this. Need 15,000 more. Another shipment of oil waiting at same place over border. Pick up immediately. We got him this time. Look, Cookie, I think it's only fair that Tom be in on this. How about releasing him in my custody? All right, you go on down to the border and I'll send him to you. We'll wait in town till we hear from you. Good. May I tell Alf? He sure can. This is the kind of medicine he needs. In the meantime, I'll see that this message gets to the right place. Good. Come on. You know, if this works, I'm going to give this pigeon a home for life. Well, he'll have a home, all right, because this is going to work.
Baker came up in a hurry. What do we care? Those drums are worth 20 grand. And here's the Border Patrol shack. Get the clearance papers ready. I got a load of soybean oil. Here's the papers. Okay, get out of the cab. What do you mean? I'm in a hurry. I wouldn't be if I were you. Things are a little different this time. Get out. Trigger. Tom, handcuff them and take them and this stuff to town. I'll follow on Trigger. Okay, Roy. Look out, Roy! You're curious about those drums, aren't you? Rocco, open a couple of those empties. Pretty smart, weren't you, Roger? When Tom was released from jail, I figured something had gone wrong with our plans. But it's never too late to make them go right. We're taking both of you with us. All right, Roger. Get in there.
find him, Trigger. Too much mud. Come on. shoved it over the cliff. He's dead. Roy, I found something. Come and help me. Help me, Roy. What's the hurry? What's the hurry? He's out of here. Let me out. Tom. The excitement, they forgot which barrel they put me in and threw the wrong one off. Hi, Dad. Hello, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, Dad. Sure good to see you. Hi, Dad. We sure thought you were a goner, boy. Yeah, we sure did. As a duly elected judge, I find Tom innocent of all the charges against him. But just wait till Mr. Newcomb comes up before me. <laughs> <laughs> 